today's lesson we are going to look at physics 1505 that is mechanics we are going to look at 2013 may june question paper our main focus will be on question three let us start this is the actual question paper it's question three the mark allocation it's 15 marks now let us look at the scenario the scenario says a block is projected up a frictionless inclined plane with initial speed 3.50 meters per second the angle of incline is 32.0 degrees then looking at the picture form of this scenario we have something like this where the initial velocity of the block is 3.50 meters per second the angle is 32.0 degrees then the displacement is this direction looking at the force diagram of this scenario we have normal force we have fg then we have the components of fg which is f g perpendicular which is mg cos theta and then we also have its horizontal component which is fg parallel or horizontal fx mg sin theta now as the block is moving up we do agree that there is no applied force experienced by the object and then we also don't have kinetic frictional force since the incline is frictionless so the first question says draw a free body diagram we have something like this it's normal force then we have fg this is the free body diagram B says, or the question says, how far up the plane does it go? So how far is the displacement or the distance? We have two options to actually solve this question. We can use the mechanical energy, actually the conservation of energy to calculate the, the height of the plane and also find the displacement so let us start with the equations of motion we have something like this since this is on an incline we consider this Cartesian plane so we take this direction as positive we take this direction as negative so using Newton's second law we have F net is equals to MA then from here we can see that forces which does work on the object it's only this force so we have FG parallel is equals to MA and then FG is actually MG sine theta is equals to MA now since fg parallel is facing on the opposite direction which is on the negative direction we are going to put negative here then from here we can see that we have masses on both sides so we can divide both sides by m then this will get rid of this this will also get rid of this so a is equals to negative mg it's actually m is no longer there we have negative g sine theta then from here we can get our deceleration by substituting sine 32.0 degrees our deceleration is negative 5.193 meters per second squared 
Now remember when the object is increasing in terms of velocity, if there's an increase in velocity, we know that the object is accelerating. And then when the object is decreasing in terms of acceleration, I mean velocity, we know that the object is decelerating. And the difference between or the indication between acceleration and deceleration, we look at the sign. So since it's negative, we know that the object's acceleration is on the opposite direction, this direction. Then we say the object is decelerating. Now since we have the deceleration of the object, we can use our equations of motion. 2A S. Sometimes it's changing X, sometimes it's S. Sometimes it's simply D. Now we know that the object somewhere on top of this incline will stop. So the moment it stops, its velocity will be 0 meters per second. So going back to our equation, our final velocity is 0 meters per second. Our initial is 3.50 squared plus 2 negative 5.193. S. 3.50 squared is equals to 12.25 and then when we transpose 12.25 we have negative 12.25 equals to negative 5.193 multiplied by 2 is negative 10.386 S. Divide both sides by 10.386 This will result into 1, 1 multiplied by S. We get our displacement 1.179 meters. So this is the actual answer to the first question. I mean the first question we are done, the second question which is B. It says how far up the int line does it go? So this is the displacement. Our next question says, which is question C, how long does it take to get there? How long does it take to cover 1.179 meters? So we need to calculate the time. So this is the updated scenario with all the data. Remember we calculated the displacement. So we can use equations of motions again. We can choose any equation that has what we have and what you're looking for. So the equation is this one. We can use this equation to calculate time. Our final velocity is zero equals to initial it's 3.50 remember that deceleration negative 5.193 and then we have time so it's negative 3.50 equals to negative 5.193 t we divide both sides by negative 5.193 then time is 0 0.674 seconds our next question says calculate its speed when it gets back to the bottom we are here So the question requires us to calculate, okay, this is scenario A. 
it goes up then scenario B it comes down the question is looking for the velocity at this point we know that as it goes up the initial it was 3.5 meters per second final it's 0 meters per second and then when it goes down our initial velocity will be 0 meters per second and then we're looking for this velocity there are many ways to actually calculate this but the first way we know the time it takes from here up to here which is 0 0.674 seconds that is our time so it means from A to B it takes 0 0.674 seconds from B to A it will take another 0 0.674 seven four seconds so it means from a to b from a b a the entire journey will be that is the total time it will be two multiplied by or you can say t is equal to 0 0.674 it's when it goes up plus 0 0.674 when it comes down then you'll find the total time it takes from here up to here. Our total time is 1.348 seconds. So with this information, we can actually calculate V is equals to VI plus A change in time. We are looking for the final velocity, the initial velocity at point A is 3.50 plus, remember acceleration, our deceleration is negative 5.193 and then time we take off the whole gene which is 1.348. The answer is negative 3.50 meters per second so this is the answer that's it for this lesson video this is Wahula SJ thank you very much